Hey there folks, Brent here for Pastures Farm. Welcome, welcome back to the farm. In behind us here, we did this thing a couple of weeks ago. I was out here the other day and it came a gully washer rainstorm. I mean, just an absolute downpour. Looks like we did pretty good <laughs> for the most part. I don't know how well this is gonna show up on camera. That's a swimming pool. We'll definitely have to fix that. The first thing we're gonna have to do is get that water off of there and then figure out what to do with this tarp. Honestly, I feel like if I just pull down on this edge right here, it's gonna drain. Yeah, let's try that and see what happens. I still don't think that's the answer. We redid the bungee so that it at least pulls this corner down here. But I feel like we're still gonna get pooling or puddling right in here. And short of putting maybe a rafter of some kind along the middle so that it's more gabled like a regular roof. I'm not sure what else to do. Good news is there is zero rain in the forecast for the next 10 days, so I've got time to deal with it. y'all over the last several videos you've seen us bring a whole bunch of wood in here we burned all that up put all that ash and biochar in the soil then we brought our top soil in put that on top and nature has taken its course in just a couple of weeks since I came in late yesterday right at dark actually and mowed this section we're gonna get some cover put down to smother all this out once we get this section done we'll do that section and then we'll just alternate back and forth between the two sections all summer long to keep all the grass and the weeds suppressed. And then probably late in the summer, we'll let it go just a bit. And then we'll bring the chickens back in here and they'll spend the winter in here picking through whatever they can find. And of course, putting down a whole lot of fertilizer in our soil. Now, at some point in time, we are going to do some tillage. We have a lot of rock, and when I say rock, I don't mean pebbles, right? I mean, when I say rock, I mean we have a lot of rock. So, we're going to till, and unfortunately have to do it the old-fashioned way of back-breaking work and picking up rocks. I wish I had a rock picker or a soil sifter or something. I've tried a soil sifter in the past, and it just didn't work because our soil has so much clay in it. It just packs in and smothers it out and everything just runs right off not a whole lot goes through so unfortunately it will have to be the old-fashioned way of just picking rocks by hand and, and using a rake and whatever else we can use to, to do it so this weedy mess over here 
has got a couple of raised beds in it. This one here directly is just in the weeds. That one's empty. We do have at least one, if not two others, right in here between the camera and the tractor. One's got what's left of some asparagus in it. Further down here, down here towards the bottom of the hill, has uh, irises, a couple different beds of irises there. One is overrun with blackberries. At some point, we're gonna take the irises out and put them all in one bed and then the blackberries will be a bed in and of itself and we'll have those contained instead of just running rampant once we get that done we'll come in and clean all this up mow it all down weed eat it whack it what have you get it all cleaned up but for now we need to get our soil covered i had looked at doing a silage tarp and one they're pricey a silage tarp would go a long ways to cover in this 5,000 square foot garden, but I decided to go with this plastic instead. And, and while I hate using plastic or tarps in and of themselves, it's what we have to do to get a good kill here for the time being. Now this black plastic can be repurposed, whereas a silage tarp, I mean I guess you could use a silage tarp for other things, but let me show you. Those IBC totes are wrapped in this same plastic. So when one of those totes goes bad or the plastic just deteriorates, I can just cut a piece of this off and reuse it for covering an IBC tote. And the reason you cover the IBC tote is to keep algae from growing inside your tank. The tanks are kind of a frosted white, uh, but the sunlight will penetrate and you'll grow a heaping load of algae in there which clogs up your pumps and your pipes and your lines and your filters and everything else. So by keeping them covered, you eliminate your algae problem. Just to give you an idea of the size of our garden, that plastic is covering a thousand square feet. Now I'd like to cover more, certainly. However, what I've got covered right here was 70 bucks. That's 70 dollars worth of plastic laying there on the ground. We've got some hot, sunny days coming. And when I say hot, sunny days, I'm talking in the 90s. No chance of rain for the next 10 days, according to the forecast. So what's underneath this plastic here is gonna burn and smother out pretty quickly. Once that happens, we'll just take this, and move it up here and do this next session until we get up to here. Once we have this section done, it will bump down and we'll just work our way all the way around and just keep going in a circular pattern of some type all summer long and then we'll come in with wood chips and cover this entire thing I forgot I had this 10 by 20 tarp up here each of these strips we've got strip here is 10 feet and then this back strip there is 10 feet so 20 feet total so we've got 20 feet this away 10 feet this away to give us some extra coverage now as I was putting this tarp down, I did notice some tracks in the dirt. Now keep in mind that it rained last night up until about 8 o'clock this morning, so any tracks that were in the dirt should have been at least disturbed if not completely washed away, which means these tracks were fresh. Now in the garden it's not that big of a deal, considering we're not growing anything, I'm not too concerned about it in the garden. However, right there are our chickens. The fence is just right, right here, just the other side of this grown up spot is the fence. I don't know if it's going to show on camera from this angle or not facing into the sun, but the fence is right there. The tracks were right down here. That's a little too close. We're going to have to get our live trap moved up here and get it baited. See if we can relocate this rascal before he starts causing some problems. We've got bait in the back. Give them a little teaser here at the entrance. Draw them in. Let them get to the back and then whammo. Stuck like Chuck. I don't think putting those sticks on there makes a bit of difference. Because sometimes I do it and I catch stuff and sometimes I don't do it and I catch stuff. It sure is pretty, but it sure is hot. 
Good grief. Somehow I've managed to get this thing tied just right so that it drips like this 24-7. Now I do have some water loss overnight obviously because the girls aren't drinking but during the day when it's hot and sunny and just blazing, this little drip has significantly reduced my need to pump water. Who would have guessed? Drip irrigation for chickens. And this thing is set on a timer to close, uh, I think about nine o'clock this evening, and open about 7.30 in the morning. I've had it about a year. I guess about, I've had this thing about a year and a half, and you can see it's clearly faded. This used to be orange, now it's yellow. Chicken was yellow. This up here used to be orange. This used to be white. Of course, it's the sun, the UV rays have just taken its toll on it. I don't know how much longer it's going to last, but we'll run it and see. It was about the cheapest thing I could find. This brand, whatever this is, Vivor, Vivor, I don't, whatever it is, is like an Amazon Chinese something, another knockoff stuff. Uh, the door is pretty good. It's, I mean, it's a solid sheet of metal. So this thing here has this little tab up here and there's one on the bottom and there's a magnet sensor in here and so it knows exactly when it comes up and it hits the sensor here and when it comes down and it hits that sensor there all the way down and it knows when to shut off and, and when to start I mean operationally it works pretty good the frame is good this piece here the metal frame is good this is pretty good this piece here works as it should 
Although, as you heard, it sounds like it's on the struggle bus. Now, the batteries are at about 70%. And the batteries last a pretty good while, as long as you use good quality batteries. If you buy the cheapest thing on the shelf, they're not going to last long. But if you buy some good Duracells or Energizer, you know, something that's got a heavy weight to it that you can feel, it does pretty good. Uh, I will say rechargeable batteries, unfortunately, just don't last. I, I don't know why. I don't know if it's the heat, if it's the cold, if it's the operation power drain of the door or what. But I've tried it. They lasted about two weeks. So we went with, I don't know, I think those are Duracells. No, Energizers. I've got Energizers in there now, and they've lasted, I guess, about six months, and they're at 70% charge, according to this. Little feller. Tiny little raccoons. These have got to be spring chickens. There's no way these coons are at least a year old or more. You ready to ride, Clyde? Time to relocate you. Probably can't tell it once again, but straight down this hill here at the bottom is a river. Hey, it's just okay, trying to hide in there. Boy, he's got a big old tick on the back of his neck. Good grief. Oh, me. <clears throat> the old logging road. I wonder if he'll run down the road. All right there, Mass Bandit, you ready to bounce? Your relocation services are coming to an end. down the hill and you know what we say off to live his best life <laughs> 